Hello everyone, in the last video we went over glycerolipids and sphingolipids, focusing on the distinguishing alcohol backbones that divide those classes of lipids, and their different arrangement of extensions of those molecular backbones, while also examining phospholipids and how we can have varying head groups through a phosphodiester bond on the attached phosphate. Yet continuing with our investigation into common lipids we find embedded in the membrane, let's begin analyzing glycolipids, a vast class of lipids that are crucial in cellular communications, functioning as surface receptors, important contenders in biochemical pathways, and much more. Where the defining characteristics of glycerolipids and sphingolipids are defined by their molecular backbone, glycolipids, like phospholipids that we mentioned previously, are characterized by a specific attachment to the lipid, a sugar, or multiple. Starting with the simplest example, glycolipids are sugars attached to fatty acids directly through a glycosidic bond. Glycosidic bonds are a typocovalent bond that attaches a cyclic sugar molecule to another molecule. In our first example of a glycolipid, the fatty acid attached to a monosaccharide, meaning a single sugar. In this case, let's examine glucose. So the fatty acid is attached through that glycosidic bond to the first carbon of the cyclic glucose molecule. This is where we start to see a trend that we're going to see played out multiple times through studying glycolipids. We can examine the structure of a specific lipid with a single sugar attached, but these sugar chains can vary by length, spanning from disaccharides, trisaccharides, and even long sugar chains, branching off of the fatty acid or molecular backbone that they're attached to. Next, let's examine glycolipids that are attached to a molecular backbone, starting with glycerolipids. These lipids have a glycerol backbone with a phosphate on the third carbon position with the sugar attached to a phosphodiester bond. In the previous example, we mentioned glucose, but moving forward when analyzing sugar attachments, we're going to see that glycolipids are not just limited to glucose. For example, a common sugar attachment that we see in important glycolipid players in biochemical pathways is inositol. Here we can see examples of comparing glycerol glycolipids with glucose and inositol. The defining characteristic of glycerol glycolipids is that sugar, either one or branched sugar chains, is attached to the phosphate on the third position of the glycerol through that phosphodiester bond. And throughout our time studying different biochemical pathways that are dependent on lipids on the cell membrane, we're definitely going to be revisiting a lot of glycerol glycolipids. Next, let's examine glycerol sphingolipids. Interesting enough, there are more classifying terms for this subclass of lipids than with glycerol glycolipids. The structure of the sphingoid backbone that the sugars are attached to are a specific class of sphingolipids, sierramides where we see that fatty acid attached to the nitrogen group through that AMI linkage. Starting with our first example of glycosphingolipids, sierrobosides are one sugar molecule, commonly glucose or galactose, attached to the first carbon of the sierramide through a glycosidic bond. Where on the other hand, if we extend the sugar chain to di, tri, tetra, or even longer oligosaccharides, excluding sialic acid, we can classify the glycerol sphingolipids as globosides. Next are the more complex glycerol sphingolipids with specific sugar derivatives. Glangosides are similar to globosides, yet contain a specific sialic acid attachment. Or on the other hand, sulfatides contain a specific sulfated galactose attachment. I hope through going through these examples, the trends of lipids and their classifications because of specific characteristics of common backbones or attachments is shown. Yet before closing this lesson, I want to highlight one very interesting detail about glycolipids. Since they range from anything from short to long sugar chains, these lipids extend greatly from the bilayers. And additionally, since they participate so much in surface receptors for cellular communications, we mostly see these types of lipids on the exoplasmic leaflet, or the side of the cell membrane exposing them to the extracellular fluid. This is a pretty good introduction to the asymmetric characters of lipid bilayers depending on the functions that specific lipids and proteins need to perform either outside or inside the cell. I truly hope this video helped you learn a little bit more about 
about glycolipids and the different subclasses of glycolipids. I just want to remind you that all these pages can be downloaded for free over on my website, doodlesinthemembrane.com. So hopefully, you guys can rewatch this video following along with the graphics and maybe help you with your future studies. I wish you guys have a great day. See ya!